What's up guys, welcome to Trending Reviews. So I just want to start off by saying a big thank you to all my subscribers. I've just hit 10,000, so I'm very happy. If you're new to this channel, then uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I cover a whole range of tech from camera equipment to smartphones to other little gadgets, headphones and this kind of stuff, even car technology as well. So I'm pretty sure you're gonna really like the reviews that I have coming out in the near future. Take a look at all of my previous reviews and if you do like them, then please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Today, I'm pretty excited. I've got this new gadget here. This is called the Li Pao portable monitor. So it's a 15.6 inch portable full HD monitor that I'm gonna set up and showcase a whole bunch of use cases and scenarios for it, give you a quality and a setup review. So let's just get straight into it. Let's go ahead and open up this box. It's a very clean looking box, kind of like the Apple products. So quite a few things in here. We have the user guide, a gift card, a customer service card. This is really cool. You have yourself a screen protector for the actual monitor. Let's go ahead and lift this up. Take out the monitor. That is very lightweight. It only weighs 1.7 pounds. It's absolutely light. It pretty much resembles a very larger version of my iPad Pro, which I think is just awesome. I'll uh, open this up in a second. Let's just see what else is in the box. So you have yourself a few cables. This one is a USB-C to USB-C cable. This is a HDMI to mini HDMI cable. And you also have yourself a power plug and a USB to USB-C to connect to the power plug as well via the USB port there. So you do need to power this on for most scenarios, but there is some cases that you probably wouldn't need an external power to power the monitor, which I will also showcase. And the last thing is the patch cleaning kit for when you wanna put the screen protector on the actual screen. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So you have yourself a magnetic stand and cover. So this is very resemblant of the ones that you used to get for iPads. Now take a look at how thin this is. That is only 0.3 inches thin. It's very lightweight. And the screen as well, I'm just gonna peel off this protective coating. Sometimes my favorite part. Now this is an IPS screen, which is a liquid crystal display, which gives you great color and viewing angles. And it has a 60 Hertz refresh rate on it as well. That looks so clean, it looks so modern. It's got very minimal bezels around the side, which looks great. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. Okay, so you just open this up, you put that forward and you bring this forward like that. So you have various different viewing angles, very quick and easy. Now, this video may be a little bit long. I'm gonna cover five specific things as you can see on the sidebar here. So I will leave them chaptered down below as well. If in case you wanted to skip to any of those categories, then you can do that. Otherwise, let's just get straight into it. So just taking a look at the ports on the left-hand side of the monitor, you have yourself a mini HDMI port a USB-C port, which allows you to connect any external device. And then you have a headphone jack. You can use this as an auxiliary port to connect an external speaker as well. On the right hand side, you have another USB-C port, which is used to power the monitor. You also have a roll button, which actually allows you to scroll through the menu and the on-screen display. Then you also have a power button to turn the device on and off. On each side of the monitor, you also have internal built-in speakers. And we'll take a look at how this sounds very shortly. So the monitor itself can be viewed at different angles. If you use the magnetic snap case, then you can set this to position in various different angles like so. And if like myself, you wanna use this for work and you have a MacBook Pro, then you can use the USB-C to USB-C cable and connect this directly without having an external power source to the actual monitor. So you wouldn't need to plug this in and have this powered on separately. You can just use the USB-C port on the left-hand side and draw in the power from the MacBook Pro to power the monitor. Now there's a couple of ways you can use the monitor. You can actually extend it as a second display to your MacBook or your laptop or wherever you're using it, or you can mirror it. So if you are doing presentations and you wanna show something to someone else of what you're seeing, then you can also do that and change that in the settings. 
Also, if you go into your computer settings, you can actually change the orientation. So rather than viewing this as a landscape monitor, you can switch it to portrait mode and then rotate this and stand it up on its side and then have it as a very vertical monitor. Maybe if you're a developer or a coder, this will be very useful for seeing more real estate for when you're coding and seeing a lot more text. So there's a lot of different uses for that. Another thing that you can use this monitor for is gaming. So if you wanted to connect your PlayStation or your Xbox or even your Nintendo Switch, you can use the HDMI cable to connect it to the mini HDMI port and do some gaming on this. So this is really convenient for you to take away with you wherever you want to set up a gaming. Maybe you go to your friend's house, wherever it may be. So you can do that. And here's an example of me playing a game using Steam, but I've connected it using my MacBook Pro. I've not connected a game console as I don't have one with me here. So I'm uh, seeing the quality in the gaming, I'm seeing the colors, the display. It's just like playing it natively on your original device that your gaming is connected to. So if I was using just my MacBook Pro for gaming, it's exactly the same and I'm not seeing any difference, which I think is great. And with the gaming, you can also adjust the display as well to make it brighter, to change the contrast, the temperature, the colors, whatever it may be, to enhance your gaming experience on this monitor. And not just laptops, but you can also connect tablets. So I have my iPad Pro, as you can see, I've connected it and it's going into a mirror display by default. So as you can see, there is absolutely no lag. It's as if the monitor is an iPad itself. I'm just scrolling through the different apps. I'm loading an app, I'm closing, I'm browsing the app store. Everything is just perfect. And obviously because of the resolution on the iPad, it won't fill the entire screen of the monitor, but that's absolutely fine. And it does the purpose that it was made for. Now, in terms of connecting your mobile phone to the monitor and mirroring everything on that, onto this screen, that is possible. But they mentioned in the user guide that this only works for a select number of mobile phones and models. So have a look through here. Most of these Samsung phones work absolutely fine with this. I have the Google Pixel 4 XL that didn't work with this. So I would ideally go in and check to see if your phone is compatible, if you do want to display that just quickly. Here's the sample list that they've specified. So you can go ahead and pause the video if you wanted to look at this in more detail. So there's a wide range of phones and uh, models compatible with this so do take a look at that and if you have one of the older macbook airs you might not have a usb-c port you might not have a hdmi port then what you would need to do is get a thunderbolt to hdmi adapter put that into your thunderbolt port and then connect the hdmi to mini hdmi on the monitor and it will work absolutely fine so plenty of use cases that's absolutely perfect and i'm very happy with that right so now let's take a closer look at the screen quality in terms of the brightness and the colors so the monitor itself has 16.7 million colors available. So they are very bright and it is on a very large spectrum of that. In terms of the color temperature, it does have 6,800 Kelvins, which is adjustable in the settings, but it helps you to prevent eye strain in dark rooms. Now the contrast ratio is a thousand to one, which is standard on most monitors. So you get good level of deepness in the blacks and the brightness in the whites. The screen itself does have 300 nits of brightness, which is ideal for all indoor scenarios, but might not be bright enough in broad daylight. But then how many times will you be taking this outdoors and doing work externally in bright sunlight? So the color gamut is at 72%, which is pretty much the industry standard for monitors of this size. And the capability of this is sufficient for most people. But just remember 72% of NTSC is roughly equivalent to 100% of the sRGB color gamut. Now let's dive in a little bit around the sound quality on this monitor. Right, so here's a YouTube video. Now the volume has been switched over in my settings to be played directly from the monitor and I have it at 50%. So it's pretty quiet. I will put the volume up. All I have to do is put the roll button down and then the volume thing comes up and then I can put it to 100. Now the speakers are not that loud, but this monitor is not really built with the purpose of having great audio coming from it. It's more of the portability of the actual monitor and the screen itself. So I wouldn't really recommend using this to play out music or your videos or movies or anything like that. 
Of course, if you do have an external speaker, then it will be great to set this up with this using the auxiliary port as well. So final thing to check is the video quality on how this displays on this monitor. For the price of this product and this monitor, it's very clear, the images are very sharp and the colors are vibrant, I'm very happy. So I can definitely see myself using this for Netflix or watching any other TV shows or movies or anything like that. So I think it's a big thumbs up from me. Okay, and finally, the on-screen display. So here, if you press the roll button on the right-hand side of the monitor, you'll bring up the menu. If you cycle through, you can go through image, color temperature, the OSD settings, reset, and miscellaneous. So brightness, obviously, as you can see, there's very basic options of the brightness, contrast, black level, and sharpness. On the image, you can do a couple of things here. In Eco, you can change from standard to RTS, FPS, text, movie, game, or back to standard. So depending on what you're doing on the screen, this can be adjusted accordingly. If you go to DCR, then you can adjust that here. If you turn that on, if you go back to the main menu, brightness and all of the other adjustments here are disabled. So to re-enable that, you'll have to go back and turn DCR off, like so. You can change the aspect ratio of the monitor as well, from wide to 4.3. You can do a user set color temperature if you wanted to change the RGB colors on that. Language, timer, and transparency, of course, the main settings for the OSD. If you wanted to reset the device, you can do that. The volume adjustment can be done here, or you can just do it manually with the roll but I would suggest maybe leaving this on mute as well because the speakers are probably not the greatest on this, so I would use an external speaker or something else to play your audio through. And then finally, the miscellaneous, so your signal source, if you wanted to change the output coming from maybe HDMI, then you can do that here, or you can change the HDMI mode to on. So you can do that or leave it on auto. So those are all of the basic menu options on the on-screen display. Okay, so thanks for watching. Now I'm very happy with this. I will be using this as a second monitor to my MacBook Pro. It's £189 on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below where you guys can check this out. I highly recommend it if you are looking to expand your working experience from home, for example, or if you just want something to take with you and showcase to other people, do presentations, whatever it may be, I'm sure you'll find a use and a purpose for this very happy if there's anything else you guys want to know as usual drop a comment down below otherwise i hope you subscribe i've got tons more really cool gadgets coming out in the future much like this one and i do take requests as well if you guys have anything else you'd like me to review then also let me know otherwise i hope you like this video and i'll catch you guys next time take care <laughs>